What's up guys, Reese here from Reese3D.com. In the last lecture, we learned a little bit of Photoshop and we also talked about shapes. In this video, I'll show you how we can create a very simple logo. Okay, so to start with the logo, let's begin with pencil and paper. So I'm going to create a very simple logo based on the alphabet R. Okay, now I'm basically going to have two sections of this uh, logo. So one is going to be just a straight line and the other is going to be something that looks like a lightning bolt. Okay, basically to create the shape of R. Okay, so uh, let me draw the straight line first. Okay, it's going to be something like that, a thick straight line. And the next one is going to be in the right side and it's going to create the shape of the lightning bolt. So uh, roughly it's going to be coming like that, and then it has to go in here, and then come down here. Okay, so um, we can start by building the shape. So I'm going to make uh, the top to match up here. So let's roughly make a line here. So that's it. So from there, I can actually draw a thicker line here. Okay, so that has to be the beginning. And then I'm going to draw something like that okay and then i'm going to take it down here and as you can see these are very straight lines okay so it may not be accurately uh it may not be exactly straight lines here but when we draw it in photoshop we can make them into straight lines okay so um let me just add a line like so okay and then it's going to come back here now keep in mind up here it's a bit thicker and when it comes down it's becoming thinner and thinner okay so there we go so that itself looks like R but I'm just adding this guy along with that uh, I think it's too small maybe I will make it a bit bigger okay now keep in mind while taking it into Photoshop also we can still further make changes to this um, I think it's a little thicker maybe this guy we can make him a bit more thin or you can have this double line so there are lots of possibilities that we can do okay so I think that's it so I think this should be fine I think I'll make it a bit uh, less thicker okay so that's basically our logo now what we're going to do is we're going to basically take a photo of this bring it inside Photoshop and we will learn how to uh, create this logo in Photoshop. Now, instead of taking photograph or uh, instead of scanning it to the computer, we also have a very nice Adobe software called Adobe Capture. Okay, in this video, I'm not going to talk about that, but it's a very nice software. You should try it. Okay, so through the magic of editing, we're going to jump into Photoshop. Okay, guys, so now we're in Photoshop and we're going to bring in the picture that we have drawn and we will start creating the shape in Photoshop. Now to open the file that we have taken as a photograph or a scanned image, it will be in a JPG format most probably, we need to open that file inside Photoshop. So to do that, I'll go to File, choose Open. I'm going to pick the file that I want, click Open, that opens the file. Now this is just one method, you can also click and drag the file inside Photoshop, that will also come here. Now if you have another document opened already, now you need to be careful. If you drag and drop, it will actually go inside that picture. The best practice is go to File and choose Open the same way as I shown you. Good. So now I want to do a little crop first. Let me choose the Crop tool and it gives us all these different handles. I'm going to click from here, drag down. I'll do the same thing from bottom and I'm going to do it from left and right. Okay, so once we have the desired shape that we want, let's press enter key to finalize that. Now let me make this picture a bit bigger so that it fills up more space in our document area. For doing that, I'm going to press control key and plus. Okay, so you can see that we have our beautiful logo design. Now let's begin creating the logo from this first rectangular box. Okay, we can create it simply with the help of our rectangle tool. Now, it may not be uh, perfectly straight lines because we draw them by hand, okay? But here in Photoshop, we can make them exactly straight lines. So let me go ahead and choose the rectangle tool and make sure that you have shape turned on here. 
and I want to give a little fill color here. Now to add a color, we can simply click here. If it shows a white color with a red cross line, that means it is transparent. Now we can choose a recently used colors from here, or we can choose some of these RGB, CMYK, and different types of shades here. If you're not happy with any of these, you want to create your own custom color, we can go up here and click on this. This is our color picker. Now in the color picker, you should see that we have all the colors of a rainbow, right? So all seven colors, and we have all the in-between of those. Now, let's say I want to have some kind of a um, orangish, between yellowish color. So I'm going to choose from here and I can actually click and drag this. And this is the place which we are actually selecting the new color that we want. OK, and it also shows us which is the presently selected color. So let's say I want to move somewhere here. And I can choose this color, for example. Now, apart from this, we also have all these different values which we can use to give accurate color that we wanted. So let's say, for example, you want to use hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue is basically the color that we have here. And you can see that when I make these changes, all these values are actually changing. Okay. Now, I can also pick up, for example, based on the RGB colors, I can pick up based on this hexadecimal code, which is basically given for every single color. So in this case, I'm going to use the same color that I use for my logo, okay, which is actually C0 to F 1D, okay? So that's the exact color that I wanted. So now, this way you can actually make sure that wherever you're creating the same logo, you're getting the exact color. The hexadecimal code is a very easy way to make sure that everyone who creates a design based on this logo uses the same color okay so i'm going to click ok here and i will also make sure that i don't have any stroke so let me make the stroke to be transparent there it is now all i have to do is just click and drag that's it okay now if i hide my background layer i should be able to see exactly the logo cool let me just uh, get back the logo OK, and now let's create this shape. OK, now there are many different ways of doing the same job in Photoshop. The easiest one is to use the pen tool, but I'm going to show you in a slightly different way. OK, so I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. And this time I'm going to simply click and drag just a shape. OK, now from this, I'm going to modify these control points. OK. To do that, I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, which is basically the white arrow key. Now, if you don't see that, you might see the black arrow key. In case, you can simply right click on that tool or you can press and hold. That should reveal the direct selection tool. So click on the direct selection tool. And now you should be able to select these individual control points. Now, if you're not able to select that, if it is selecting everything all at once, you can simply deselect it and just click again. OK, and if it's still not working, just make sure that your layer is not locked or something else is happening with the layer. OK, now, once it is done, I'm going to click and drag this over here. Uh, it says that this operation will turn a live shape into a regular part. That's fine. Let's hit continue. And I'm going to click this and drag and drop here. And this corner is going to go here. This corner is going to go here. OK, so that way we basically have this simple shape. Now, if you want, you can also make other shapes to make these uh, modifications or we can also add control points here to make this uh, extend to fill up the rest of the area. That's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go to pen tool and click on it. And it also has a lot of other stuff inside. We want to add some control points here. So let me choose the Add Anchor Point tool, so which is another tool that is inside Pen tool. And I'm going to click one point here. Now, when we add this extra point, it actually adds up two little handles down here. OK, so they are useful for bending or curving the shape. Now, we don't need this. Let's just leave it as it is. Let's add a couple of more points, and then later we can remove them. OK, so let me just click here once again. I can actually zoom in a bit. Control plus. OK, and I'm going to add one here and one here. 
Uh, let's see how this comes out. If needed, we can actually add more points. Now, let's get back to our direct selection tool. Now, keep in mind, you can also use these shortcut keys to access uh, these tools. Now, because you're starting up, I just want to make sure that you know where these tools are. So that's why I'm actually going to these places to picking the tools. OK, so let's get back here and I'm going to keep that there. And this one, we're going to push it somewhere here. OK, now um, let me also just bring these guys out so that we will have more space to work with. Okay, that's good. Now, what we want is we want this to be as sharp as possible. We don't want it to be smooth. Now, it's being made smooth by these little handles, right? So we don't need these handles. We want to remove them. To remove them, you can simply go to the same pen tool and all the way down here, you will find something that says Convert Point Tool. Now, click on this and you can simply click here. So that will make it sharp, okay? And you can also do the same thing here. Click and click. Boom. So if you want to bring those uh, handles back, you can simply click on them and drag. So that will basically bring those back. Now, if you want to remove them, simply click, but make sure that you're using the convert point tool. Now, uh, at this point, I think it looks good. Let me press control minus to zoom out from there. All we need to do is just add one more point here and we can just drag it all the way down here or basically I can use the existing ones. Let me just choose the direct selection tool, bring this guy down all the way here, and I can bring this over here. Sometimes you might have to draw shapes without seeing the um, sketches. So in that case, what you can do is you can simply reduce the opacity a bit. Let's make it something like 50%, and now you should be able to see where the drawing is. Cool. Okay, uh, let me try to bring him uh, same level as this one. Now, let's just bring this back to 100% and that's it. Let me press control minus, zoom out, control minus once again, and there you go. So let me just hide the sketch that we had and that's our logo. Now, just to make sure that they're in the same height, we can actually use something called guides, right? To get guides, you need to first have rulers. So let's press Control R to bring rulers. So if you don't remember the shortcut key, you can also go to View and there should be rulers, okay? So there it is, Control R. And now we want to have some guides. So let me just click from the horizontal ruler to get a horizontal guide. You can click on the vertical ruler to bring in a vertical guide. So let me just click here and drag it and we can actually drop him right there. There you go, it's a little bit up. Let me just drink, bring this down here and that is uh, almost perfect, okay? So maybe I'll just bring this guy, let me right click to select this guy. If it's difficult to select, you can also select the layer from here. And I'm going to use my arrow keys just to bring this a little bit down. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, it looks a little down here maybe one move up, that should be fine. Now, if you want, you can actually make this uh, rectangle a bit smaller. You can either use the direct selection tool to select these control uh, vertices or control points, and you can actually move them. You can press shift key to make sure that you're moving them in the same horizontal uh, level. Okay, so that's up to you, um, depending on whatever amount of thickness you want you can make those modifications. So let's fill in uh, the background with a plain uh, white color. So let me just add a new layer just by clicking here. Uh, if you press Control Backspace, it will fill in this uh, background color. If you press Alt Backspace, it will fill in this foreground color. Okay, you can see that we have these two guys as shape layers and we can actually hide this or delete this uh, uh, drawing once we finish creating our logo. If it is locked, you won't be able to make changes to that. So you can simply double click on that, click OK, and that will unlock it. And then you can delete that layer. Cool. So once you're done, make sure that you save your file, go to File and Save. And we need to choose a PSD file, which is Photoshop file. Only when you save it as a PSD file, you will have the layers as shapes. Keep that in mind. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and make, give a name to this. Let's call this R logo. Okay, so make sure that it is PSD. Hit save. Now, if you want, you can also take a JPG output from this. 
For that, we can go to File and choose Save As. And this time, we're going to choose JPG here. Okay. So again, it's going to be our logo. Click Save. Uh, you can choose how much quality you want. Now, keep in mind, uh, depending on the amount of quality that you have, you will also have bigger file size. Okay. So uh, at maximum quality, we have 850 kilobytes. That is very less. So that's fine. We can leave it as it is. Hit OK. So that basically saved uh, the JPG file. So if I go to the documents, JPG file and the PSD file. All right, guys, so this completes this tutorial. So I hope that you understood everything. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section below and make sure that you hit the like button if you like the video and if it was useful to you. Also share it with your friends if you think it will be useful for them. In the next video, we will build more uh, complicated logos using Pentool. Okay, so until I see you in the next video, take care. Bye-bye.